months of February and August are bittersweet for the Diokos. These are the months when we celebrate both life and death. Yesterday, my father would have turned 95 had he lived. 30 years ago today, he journeyed towards his neighbor. My father is perhaps best known for his integrity, nationalism, and defense of those whom he used to call, and I quote, the little people, the plain men and women with little money and less schooling, but much wisdom and even more fortitude. What propelled my father to devote his talents, his time, and his very life were his vision for our country and his abiding faith in our people. My father's vision was articulated in a speech he gave in 1984, which he entitled, A Nation for Our Children. Quote, there is one dream that all Filipinos share, that our children may have a better life than we have had. So there is one vision that is distinctly Filipino, the vision to make this country, our country, a nation for our children. A noble nation, where homage is paid not to who a man is or what he owns, but to what he is and what he does. A proud nation, where poverty chains no man to the plow, forces no woman to prostitute herself, and condemns no child to scrounge among garbage. A free nation, where men and women and children from all regions and with all kinds of talents may find truth and play and sing and laugh and dance and love without fear. A just nation, where whatever inequality exists is caused not by the way people act towards each other, but by differences in natural talents, where poverty, ignorance, and hunger are attacked, and every farmer has land that no one can grab from him, every breadwinner a job that is satisfying and pays him enough to provide a decent standard of living, every family a home from which it cannot be evicted and everyone a steadily improving quality of life. An independent nation which rejects foreign dictation, depends on itself, thinks for itself, and decides for itself what the common good is, how it is to be attained, and how its costs and benefits are to be distributed. An honorable nation where public powers are used for the public good and not for the private gain of some Filipinos and some foreigners, where leaders speak not only well, but truthfully and act honestly. A nation that is itself and seeks to live in peace and brotherhood with all other nations of the world." Unquote. Four decades on, yet his vision, what my father worked towards, what he died for, has not come to pass. On every level, at every count, we are not the nation my father envisioned. We are a country at war with itself. There is no nobility, no justice or honor in a government that chooses to wage war against the social ills that plague our society. Dangerous drugs then, illegal gambling now. The war on drugs is a war on life that claimed more human lives than martial law did more human lives than Typhoon Yolanda or even the World Trade Center bombing. The war on drugs' main weapon is death. Its target, those merely suspected or believed or alleged to be drug users or pushers, but never proven to have violated any law, all innocent in the eyes of the law. A government that wages war against the country's social ills but ignores the fundamental economic and political structures that have characterized our country for centuries is, in my father's words, a travesty of democracy. There can be no pride in being a nation where 21.9 million Filipinos, one in every five of us, lives in poverty, unable to earn just 1,813 pesos every month. Government estimates that families living in poverty 
would need to earn an additional 2,230 pesos every month in order to escape poverty. 8.2 million Filipinos are hungry. They cannot earn, they do not earn 1,266 pesos every month, which is the minimum income needed to meet basic food needs and satisfy nutritional requirements. Misery is spreading as we suffer from prices that rise faster than our wages. The inflation rate in January 2017 was 2.7%, the highest inflation rate in over two years, while the consumer price index in October 2016 was 144 points. This means that prices are 144 times higher than they were in 2006. Government remains oblivious to the hunger, poverty, unemployment, underemployment, low wages, social injustices that abound today. Is this the promised change? The touted independent foreign policy is a sham. Government renounces one foreign master only to choose instead to serve two masters. The decision to establish economic and military relations with China and Russia quoting my father, quote, is, certainly did not stem from any heroic aspiration to independence, unquote. For as my father warned time and again, quote, only a steadfast course of intelligent, dedicated nationalism can guarantee our survival, propel our development, and transform our society. Independence, neutrality, and non-alignment are in fact the only logical and rational option. There is no freedom when our people are cowering in fear, blind to the corpses that littered our streets, unable, nay, unwilling to voice our abhorrence. We forget the valuable lesson my father taught us about fear, and I quote, when a regime relies exclusively or mainly on fear, to maintain itself in power, it becomes weakest when it looks strongest. For in time, people learn that even if they are afraid, they can nevertheless do what they should, and when they do, fierce power over them is lost. My father's impassioned plea resonates so strongly within me. Quote, tell me, for I have never come across it, at what period in our history did our people stop fighting oppression? Armed with little more than an enduring heart, an ear for music, and an eye for beauty that betray a fascination with harmony, and the longing for justice without which there could be no harmony, they have pursued a dream that will not die, the dream of a noble society. They have been, they still are, deceived and deprived, defeated and defamed. Yet they struggle on, however bumbling, mistaken, or misguided their efforts may at times seem to us." Unquote. I refuse to believe that my father's faith in our people was misguided or naive. I choose instead to believe in our people's courage, valor, strength of character. I choose to believe that our people have not turned their backs on our core values, nor have they sold our national soul. My father urged us to stand firm, find our voice, and seal our eyes. Quote, As individuals, we can refuse to accept meekly the violations of our rights and those of others. We can go to law against those who trample on our rights and stand witness when the rights of others are trampled upon. We can initiate or join protests, petitions, and public demonstrations against abuses. At the very least, we can publicly show our sympathy for the victims of abuse and our condemnation of the abuses. If we have a way with words, we can write about what is happening. If we have a talent for music, we can compose and sing songs of freedom, and we can always speak the truth. Never mind if our words and our songs are not heeded. They will linger in the air, and one day they will 
on earth, unquote. My father is no longer here to do what he would have done, but we are. He left us the burden, the honor, the privilege to work alongside our people, quote, to join their quest and work at their sign, for they labor for us also. But let us have no illusions that they need us. With us or without us, they will triumph. One day, justice and its works will reign in the land, never completely, but firmly enough to restore sanity into our society and decency into our land." On behalf of the Diopna family, I thank you very much for remembering my father. We hope you are inspired by his words, draw strength from his convictions, and with us, continue to labor towards attaining his vision, a nation for our children. Thank you.